This demo refers to the estimation of reciprocal relationships. So let's consider this model. And I suspect that there is a reciprocal relationship between C and D. If there is a reciprocal relationship, then I have an arrow pointing from D to C and an arrow pointing from C to D. These two arrows, when combined, they tend to lead to a high correlation between C and D, which um, in this case is 0.67. That's the correlation between C and D. So such a high correlation is in and of itself an indication that there may be a reciprocal relationship between C and D. Both C and D, as you can see here, are endogenous. And that's, we can only test reciprocal relationships for endogenous variables. And only when we have at least one other variable pointing at each one of them, and that's not the same predictor. So this scenario here is uh, the type of scenario that allows us to estimate a reciprocal relationship. Otherwise, I would run into a situation where the model does not have enough information for me to estimate a reciprocal relationship. In covariance-based structure equation modeling, this is called an identification problem. So since uh, to the software, um, there is no way to represent a reciprocal relationship. I will remove, first remove this from the model. So I'm going to go to proceed. Step four, remove this link. I'll redo my analysis. So now, what I'm going to do is I will have to contest for and control for endogeneity before I include my reciprocal relationship. Why? Because if there is a link going from C to D, from D to C, then there is variation in, from B that goes to C. And if there is a link from C to D, there is variation from A that goes to D. And both of these variations, they flow indirectly in the model. And I cannot just create direct links from A to D and then B to C, because I would then be creating links that do not exist at the population level. And I, I would be distorting my results. So first, I'm going to create uh, single stochastic instrumental variables that will control for endogeneity in C and D. And then after that, I'm going to create other variables that I will use to estimate the um, reciprocal relationships. Now, before I do that, I should save this project as with another name because this model here should be the one that I should use to check for this particular set of coefficients here, the focal linearity variance inflation factors. So these are the ones that I should consider in tests of common method bias and uh, collinearity tests. Because the addition of all of these other variables, I will add four other variables into the model. And the variables that will be added, the instrumental variables that will be added for uh, the estimation of the reciprocal relationships will actually be uh, collinear or, or likely be collinear with other variables in the model. So I should use the, the model without any of these instrumental variables that will be created for focal linearity assessment. OK, let me first create my single stochastic variation uh, uh, sharing uh, variables that will account for or control for endogeneity in the model. OK, so here's my model with the uh, single stochastic instrumental variables that control for endogeneity. 
uh, this one controls for endogeneity in D coming from A and this one I see controls for endogeneity in C, variation in C that comes indirectly via D from B. And these were created using the single stochastic variation sharing option. But now what I'm going to do is to create reciprocal stochastic variation sharing uh, variables that will allow me to estimate the reciprocal relationship between C and D. So what I'm going to do is first choose the two reciprocal latent variables. So I have, and here are uh, estimates of the coefficients. They may not be exactly the ones that we're, I'm going to have on uh, the model because I'm going to include these variables in the model. And, uh, but they're going to be very close. So I'm going to create the two instrumental variables. Um, I'm going to create them with slightly different names. So I'm going to call this one IVC with variation coming from D. And I'm going to call this one IVD with variation coming from C. I'm going to close out of here. I'm going to redefine my model. Now create the two latent variables. This one I'm going to call I C with variation coming from D. And the other one I'm going to call I D with variation coming from C. And I'm going to create now links between these variables and the variables that they are uh, supposed to point at. I'm going to save this model and close. I'm going to run my analysis. And I have these coefficients. So this model, in this model, I have, instru I have four instrumental variables. This variable here, I see and I D, they control for endogeneity. And these two instrumental variables, I D coming with variation coming from C and I C with variation coming from D, they actually represent the indirect links, the I'm sorry, the reciprocal links. This one for D to C and this one for the link coming from C going to D. So the reciprocal link from C to D, the, that one direction has a strength of 0.46, that's the standardized path coefficient associated with it. And the link going from D to C has a path coefficient of 0.32 and they're both significant. So this is actually a reciprocal uh, relationship. And this concludes this demo on how to estimate reciprocal relationships.